Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at two awesome single board computer cases for two of my favorite single board computers that have ever hit the market. First up, we have the all-new DeskPi Pro version 2 for the Raspberry Pi 4. I've taken a look at version 1, but they've made some changes. And the next one we're going to take a look at is the DeskPi Pro for the Jetson Nano. If you're not familiar with the Nano, I've done several videos on it. This just happens to have an aftermarket cooler on it, but this is a great little single board computer for AI, and you can turn it right into a desktop. I'll leave some links to videos I created in the description. So the first one we're going to be assembling here is the DeskPi Pro for the Raspberry Pi 4. This is the version 2 of the DeskPi Pro. Yes, I've taken a look at version 1, but they have made enough changes that I figured it would be worth taking another look at this. When it comes to the version for the Jetson Nano, I'm not going to do an assembly in this video, but we will take a look at a few of the steps and the finished product. So inside of the box of the V2 DeskPi Pro, you're obviously going to get the enclosure. We also get a nice little heatsink here, dual copper heat pipes, and an updrafting fan. This is going to vent all of the heat out of the case. They've also included a 5 volt, 3 amp power supply. We get all of our screws, all of our adapters, and everything like that, because this does add some really good functionality to the Raspberry Pi 4. Like the option to add either an NVMe SSD or a 2.5 inch SSD, and it also swaps out those micro HDMI ports that are on the Raspberry Pi 4 for full size HDMI ports. Along with all the gear that you need to assemble this with, it also comes with a really nice manual, tells you how to do everything. There is a script we need to install for the safe shutdown and reset switch, plus the variable fan that we have here. Now with this setup here, I'm going to go with the 2.5 inch SSD because I don't have any extra NVMe drives laying around, but keep in mind it does support NVMe. By the end of this video, I'll also show you how to easily transfer your operating system from the SD card over to your new drive. So first things first, we need to install this heatsink. It's actually a pretty massive heatsink when it comes to a Raspberry Pi, so uh, overclocking this isn't going to be any issue. Got the heatsink in place. Next, we need our micro SD card adapter because this does take that micro SD card to the exterior of the case. Makes it a lot easier to get to. All of the hardware is included to mount everything up. I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera and we'll be right back. So now that they've got the heatsink and the SD card adapter mounted on the Raspberry Pi 4, it's time to install our GPIO extender. It's just going to plug right into the GPIO pins on the Pi. We also have a little divider here, which just allows that ribbon cable we're going to be using to sit on top of the USB without being interfered with. Now that we have everything attached to the Raspberry Pi, we can go ahead and plug it right into this uh, main PCB. I'm just going to line it up with that 3.5 millimeter audio jack micro HDMI, and USB Type-C. We'll also need to plug in our ribbon cable for our GPIO because this is going to be external GPIO now and it'll give us access to all of the pins. We have one more ribbon cable we need to plug in and that's going to be our SD card ribbon cable. Once that's finished up, it's time to turn our attention to the drive bay or the drive PCB. There's an adapter on top here that can be removed. This is the NVMe SSD adapter, but if we just take this out with the four screws on the back, we can install a 2.5 inch SSD. I initially was going to go with an NVMe, but I don't have any extras laying around, and I had this 240 gigabyte PNY ready to go. So I've just mounted it with the four screws, and it's going to lay right here on top. There are four little pins that need to line up on the uh, bottom PCB. They'll plug directly in, but this is going to be held down with four screws to those standoffs. So now I've got everything ready to go inside of the case. I have my heatsink mounted. I've got my heatsink fan plugged in, SD card adapter, and I have that SSD installed. As you can see, it just kind of sandwiches together, and it's going to slide right into the aluminum enclosure. And uh, from here, you might have to wiggle it just a bit. You're going to mount this in with the screws on the bottom. This is not going to go anywhere at all. And once I have those screws in, I can put on my front and back plate. Really easy to do. It's going to line up. Just make sure they're in the correct orientation. And in order for the Pi to communicate with the SSD or NVMe, depending on what you installed, we're going to be working over USB 3.0. So we have this little U-shaped adapter. And the front and the back plate are going to be secured with two Allen keys on each side. So we have a total of four, and they do include the correct size wrench in the packaging. And once it's assembled, it'll look something like this. We have our power button, micro SD card, which is something I'm not going to be using after I get my operating system installed to the internal drive, and two USB 2.0 ports. Moving around back, we have our USB Type-C for power in, two full-size HDMI ports, full access to the GPIO pins, 
two free USB 2.0 ports, we have one free USB 3.0 port, our gigabit ethernet, and right in the middle we do have that 3.5 millimeter audio jack ready to go. One of the easiest ways that I've found of getting my operating system installed on another drive is to boot it directly up from an SD card running your choice operating system. In my case, it's going to be Raspberry Pi OS. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and get our operating system transferred over to our new drive. Like I mentioned, I have that 480 gigabyte SSD installed in this thing, and I'm running my operating system right now from a micro SD card. So this is really easy to do, but I recommend you update before you do anything. From here, you can just type in the easy commands to update your Raspberry Pi's operating system. Once you know you're fully updated, we're going to head to the Raspberry Pi logo, Accessories, SD Card Copier, and Copy From Device is going to be our SD card. Copy To Device is going to be our SSD. So I'm going to copy what I have right now running on my micro SD card to my SSD. Make sure you have the correct drives chosen here. I'm going to choose start and now it's going to copy that right over to the SSD for me. It could take a little while depending on the speed of your SD card and your other drive. Now that I'm finished, I'm just going to click OK, close. I'm going to shut this down, remove my SD card, and now I'm going to be booting from that SSD I just copied everything over to. Now we've got a Raspberry Pi 4 booting from an SSD or an NVMe drive in our Desk Pi case. Now what you need to do is install their scripts. This is going to allow you to control the fan. It's also going to give you a full functionality on that power and reset button. Head over to their website. This works for Raspberry Pi OS, Ubuntu Mate, Manjaro, Twister OS, 64-bit Raspberry Pi, Diet Pi OS. I mean, they've tried to get as many as they can in here. So find your correct operating system, and in my case, it's Raspberry Pi OS, and I'm going to go ahead and install this. So you can actually just copy and paste right in the terminal. It's going to make it a lot easier. And finally, we need to install that script that we just downloaded. My system's going to reboot in five seconds, and I'm fully set up here. So yeah, overall, in my testing, this has worked out great, and I'm just connected to a little portable touch monitor. That's why you see so many cables here. I got touch and power going to the monitor. And since we're booting from an SSD, load times are going to dramatically be decreased. And it really depends on what kind of SSD or NVMe you're running. But uh, with this one here and that PNY, it loads up a lot faster than if I was to run from a micro SD. And this is a touch monitor. That's why I don't have a keyboard or anything hooked up. The fan speed is actually set to come on at 55 degrees Celsius, which keeps this nice and cool. I've done some tests, but you can set this up to come on at higher or lower temperatures. It's really up to you. And when it comes to Wi-Fi, given that we have this aluminum case, I personally haven't noticed any degradation in my connection. But then again, throughout my house, I have pretty good Wi-Fi coverage. And by the way, I do have this Raspberry Pi 4 overclocked to 2.1 gigahertz, but I did some testing at the stock clocks versus 2.1. And overall, we're good on the temperature here. I ran a 10-minute stress test. I used Stressberry at 2.1 gigahertz after 10 minutes with all four cores maxed out. We only hit 57 degrees Celsius. At 1.5, we only hit 53. And like I mentioned, this fan comes on at 55 degrees Celsius. So at 1.5, we didn't even have that fan going. But as soon as we hit that 55 degrees Celsius mark with that 2.1 gigahertz overclock, the fan did come on and kept it nice and cool. So in the end, I'm a big fan of the DeskPi Pro version 2, be it for the Raspberry Pi 4 or even the Jetson Nano. I did assemble this. Uh, it works just like the Raspberry Pi version. We have a couple scripts that we can install, and it just keeps it in a nice little clean package. When it comes to the version for the Raspberry Pi 4, it does add a lot of extra functionality, like those full-size HDMI ports around the back. I was not a big fan of the micro HDMI that's included with the Raspberry Pi 4. I have tons of regular HDMI cables, and this will allow me to use them. It comes with that heatsink with an adjustable threshold, external access to the Raspberry Pi's GPIO, external access to that micro SD card, and we always have that safe shutdown and reset button built into this thing. So if you're looking for an all-around great case for your Raspberry Pi 4, and you're definitely going to be adding an SSD or NVMe, I would take a look at this. I'll leave a few links in the description. But overall, I do think it's a really nice setup for the Raspberry Pi, and now that we have one for the Jetson Nano, we actually have a decent case for this thing. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. I will leave some links in the description to the case and the SSD that I used. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. 
But like always, thanks for watching.